Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I hope everyone's doing well this morning. I'm going to go ahead and open this up with a word of prayer. <clears throat> uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for another day, Father God. Thank you for getting us here and um, getting us here safely, waking us up this morning. All of the blessings that you uh, bring into our life before we even step out of the door, Father God. Um, Father God, please bless this worship and the word that's given this morning. Um, help us all to sing together and make a joyful noise and just um, sing every word with, with the whole heart, Father God. I uh, just want to pray for those that can't be here today, um, whether it be for reasons for work or not feeling well, whatever the case may be, that you be with them and lift their spirits where they are. Um, just help them to know that you are always with them and that we are always missing them and that we love them. Um, thank you for all that you do, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The first song we're going to start with is Lord, I Give You My Heart. It's the version by Heritage Singers. Every breath. 
we still feel it's pivotal for us to uh, stay in contact with one another. So if uh, Wednesday nights or if you could come here for the live service or if you could just Zoom, uh, we do a lot, I think it's called Zooming. I don't know if it's a thing, but you know, Zoom, Duo, uh, Google Hangouts, all those things, use them to make sure you're staying in contact with your brothers and sisters. They may need an encouraging word from you and just, you know, just some love and tenderness from you guys. So. Um, this is a pray so you get into some more worship. Um, Lord Jesus, uh, Father God of heaven and earth, we just pray and believe that you are here with us right now, Lord. And you're just going to reveal to us things you want us to hear, Lord. Lord, let us open our hearts and open our ears. Let us hear what you have for us today, Lord. Lord, we get to worship you, and we are so grateful and thankful to that. We worship you because you are worthy, Lord. You are unwavering and unfailing, Lord. Lord, we have so many in the congregation who, who may be having doubts, maybe having struggles, Lord, may just be going through through things that you only know, Lord. Lord, I just, I just want to pray for all those all those things, Lord. Lord, uh, we also remember those who are struggling through health issues right now, Lord. Lord, I, I know Jack's niece has been suffering through seizures, Lord. Lord, we just heard about those of our brothers and sisters who have been tested positive for COVID. Lord, our sister who has uh, cirrhosis, Lord. Lord, our sister who just came out of surgery, Lord. I mean, we know this life throws a bunch of bunch of trials and tribulations towards us, Lord, but we know amidst all the storms, Lord, we can have you. And you can just keep our eyes on you and that you will carry us through the storm. You will get us through the storm and it will just solidify and verify that you are in us, Lord. We pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Can I get the worship team back up here? And then, um, yeah. Hey, okay, what do you guys do? The offering prayer as well? I didn't ask which one, but whoever feels led to do it, go <laughs> for it. <laughs> Church. Okay, I would like to read out of 2 Corinthians 9 verses 5 through 8. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you had previously promised, that it may be ready as a matter of gener generosity and not as a grudging obligation. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each, let each one of us give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Amen. Amen. So on that note, I would like to pray for the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for everything that you give us for this day that we are able to wake up and you were putting your breath in our lungs so that we could praise, honor, worship, and glorify your name. Thank you for uh, filling us with your spiritual word and that it goes deep in our hearts so that we can share it with all our brothers and sisters and those around us. Thank you for uh, this offering that we give to you, 
For we know that our church cannot move forward without the offering from the body of Christ. So we just ask that you open your hearts and your wallets and you give what you know that God deserves, which he deserves everything. He gave us everything. So we thank you for all this in the powerful, precious, holy name of the only Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The only one. And now we'll be covering Holy Spirit by Francesca Bedesta. <coughs> Nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare your 
I love Jesus. I came to church. But the reason why we love him is because he first loved us, right? Yeah. Oh, man. That, when I hear things like that, that just, that's just brighten your day. Just give you joy. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but right next to the bulletin, we have these little books called The Living Water. We give them out of here. Do any of you guys have any of these? I want to encourage you today on your way out to grab one. And because we're going to actually start a new series called The Living Water. Which, uh, this is one of the first books given to me when I came to Christ. It was uh, a little bigger. I got the I got the other one that had the whole New Testament but had living water on it. You know, it's funny. It's a little funny story. Uh, it was, um, like, I had the New Testament. I was, I was a new Christian, right? I'm, I'm going to church. And, uh, like, I'm following along. I've been reading it. Like, I read it front to back. I was, I was all excited. And then one day, I go to church, and he's like, yeah, we're going to be turning to the book of Isaiah. See, I didn't know that there was like a New Testament, Old Testament. I was kind of like out of the loop, right? So like, I, I think so. I thought like someone was playing a joke on me. Cause I was doing this thing. I'm like looking around, like, you know, like and I see people found it, you know. So, I, and I'm like, they got a Bible that has it. I got a Bible that don't. Like, what did I do wrong? You know, like, I don't, you know. It's like, long story short, apparently I only have the New Testament. Somebody. Kindly came in and gave me a, a Bible of the whole thing. It was a new believer's Bible. She's like, you got new written all over your face. You know what I mean? <laughs> but but, but it's, it's just, I think that's why we wanted to do this series, though. Or this is why I, I envisioned this series. Because I wanted us to get back to our first love. Amen. That first, that, that, that excitement we had when Jesus first came into our lives. Where, yeah. man, I remember walking out of that church when I first gave my life to Christ. Man, I felt lighter than a feather. I just floated out of there. All that baggage I walked in with, and then all of a sudden it was just gone. I mean, when I went back to home, it was still there very much. So, but, but I knew it wasn't there in the part that was holding me back spiritually and in my heart. God took that. He says, cast your burdens on him and take his yoke for his yoke is in me. And so I, I was just like, you know, we just ended our series about relationships. We were like, well, how... What series should we go next to? And I, I just remember every year, and it's, it's sad this year, I remember we were going to do our Christmas on Colfax, which is heartbreaking. We're still hoping, you know, something might change. But right now, as it stands, we won't be doing our, this is our biggest outreach of the year. And every year, we give out these books, and we pray for people. And I'm like, you know what, baby? What we could do is we could go through the book together as a church. It's the book of John. And we, we could, we could, Get this living water and be satisfied, satisfy our thirst. But then maybe while we're out in the world, we could offer up that living water. Have it with you. Keep it in your pocket. I mean, it's pocket size, you know, or your purse or wherever. And then maybe whenever you're feeling down, go look through it. Or if you know somebody that might be encouraged by it, give it to them. We'll give you another one. we got boxes of this stuff. And I, and I was just like, that's what I want to do for the next couple months with you guys. Is go through the book of John. Well, we started right here, and uh, like the title of the series will be called Living Water, and we get that from verse 414. And it says, The water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. That's what we have today. Our church today, New Life in Christ, we have everlasting life. We, we, should, we should have something that keeps overflowing. Like that doesn't never ceases. You know, you've ever poured a cup of coffee and just forgot about it and it starts spilling everywhere. And I'm hoping that that's what this series does. It just goes everywhere. Makes, makes it just amazing results. Now we could go and just go out to the world and just get excited about the gospel. Because I mean, yeah, we, 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 I love theology, man. I love going to the doctrine. I love, I love just reading the Old Testament, just, you know, finding where all the connections were. Because, you know, once I found out that Jesus was this all saturated in all the Old Testament and everything. I just wanted to find them. But here we were going to go through the book of John and it's just going to be revealed to us by the disciple whom he loved. And another, that's how John described himself in the, in the book of John. He, just, he says, the, the disciple whom Jesus loved. But we can describe all ourselves by that title. You are the disciple whom Jesus loves today. Amen. So I, want, I just want to see it. I, if you guys don't know this, uh, so like uh, John... He was tasked at presenting Jesus as God. It's kind of, it's kind of really cool when you later that he, he presents Jesus as God. Uh, Luke presents him as son of man, as man. Mark as servant. Matthew as king. And the coolest thing is, 
that Jesus embodied all those. He was 100% man, 100% God. People were like, well, that's 200% man. Hey, I can't compute. Hey, it's not for me to, to make you understand. Like, that's why we still got to live by faith. We just know that that's the truth. So right, right, right before we even get to the beginning, that's the title of today's message. Let, let's pray because we got a momentous task ahead of us, but it's going to be a joyful one yeah. as we go through this together. Ah, uh, Lord, thank you again for bringing us together. Lord, this is your time. We come here to worship you. Lord, let our hearts and ears be open for your servants are here to hear. Uh, we love you. We pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So again, the title of today's message, The Beginning. And it starts off, like I said, if you guys got your Bibles in front of you, you can check. You got one of these. It's going to be in there. But we're going to be starting in verse 1, chapter 1. As we begin at the beginning. Because it is the beginning. Starting in verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. So, so right away, John doesn't, you know, pull any punches. I love it. He comes in, he comes in swinging and says, in the beginning was the Word, guys. You know, in the beginning, there was God. There, there was no beginning without God. God is what started the whole thing. God didn't have a beginning because He was the beginning. He was outside of time. There was no time prior to God making time. And in that time, there was the Word. And the Word, we're going to know, points to Jesus Christ. They call it the, the, the Logos. I don't know, I'm horrible with Greek, but, but pretty much the Greek philosophy, the Greeks would have understood this as like, they just believe that that word was just illustrating all of the purposes of the universe, right? And then the Jews would have understood it as, well, you know, it's the word of God. But he's talking to both of them because he was saying, you know, I'm going to tell you guys about the word. And we, and we know that in Genesis, what did God do? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And the darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. What did God do? He spoke. Amen. He spoke existence into existence. I don't, I don't know. I'm not God, thank goodness. You know, because I'm not be messing everything up. But I mean, like, he was, he was there to start it all. And not only was he there, but God the Son was there. Yeah, I hear a little bit of feedback and stuff. I feel like I'm getting a haircut. That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> we just try to ignore it. It's all right. But when he, when he spoke it into existence, the word came out. And I, and I love that too because when you're hearing that, I mean, you're just like, how powerful must that be just to speak everything? I don't know if you guys ever watch documentaries. I love documentaries. I mean, you watch documentaries about the galaxies and all that and this ain't a small universe we live in. You know, we got, we got a big God. We were like, oh, we got a big world. We got an even bigger God. I mean, as, as much as we feel minute or insignificant, I'm going to tell you right now, the creator of everything that was created knows you and knows everything about you. Amen. That, that, that is... That is something so cool. There you say, that God, which God? The one that created everything. What the one that created? Yet he came to give us life. Because they already know who's, who's like, the audience that's reading the book of John. They're probably like, man, who's he talking about? We, we know who he's talking about. He's about Jesus. And then what did he say? He said, the same one that created life is going to bring a light to you, to this world. Like, what are we supposed to be? We're supposed to be lights of this world, right? But not only was there light, but there was life. Other than in John 1, 4, it says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. God blessed us with life at birth. 
We, 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 we were born. That, that's a blessing. But he's here to give us life, a new life that's eternal. He wanted to come to the world and give us what he, the, the true gift, which was salvation through him so we could have eternal life with him forever. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that is kind of hard to, to grasp. You know, you know, like when I first started ministry, I started teaching kids. Kids help me out more than I help them out. Because the things that I struggle grasping, they were able to grasp it so easy. Because I'd be like, man, you know, Jesus was the life, and you know, he had the light, and the light all over there. They're like, yeah, that makes sense. Now we're still struggling. Like, well, what does that mean? Because it was like, what? This just means God gives us life. Or like when you say, Jesus loves you, he was like, why does he love me? You know, us adults are always like, well, why? Why would he do that? I don't see why he would do that. Kids are just like, duh. I know he loves me. Look at me. I'm awesome. You know, that's how, that's how kids think. You know, I try. We, we should have faith like kids, but but we don't. We we've had we've had a lot of struggles and we've had a lot of shortcomings. We've done a lot that we're probably not so proud of. And then what do we do? We 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 like to. It says we love the darkness. This is another way it's put. We, 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 we love this world. We, we, we don't want the light. I don't, I don't know if you guys ever noticed this, but at the bars, what happens when the light comes on? Everybody scatters. They leave the light roaches. You know what I mean? They're out here. They don't want to be seen doing something they're not supposed to. What, is, what does the light do? The light reveals the things that are hidden. I don't know about you, but I would love to hide a lot of the things I've done in my past. I like to hide a lot of things I did yesterday. I don't know. I don't know. We, 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 we know the worst of ourselves, but you know what's even crazier is God knows the worst of ourselves even more. He knows every thought you've ever had. And yet he's still, after putting that light in you and seeing it all, he says, I forgive it all. Amen. Every year he says, he doesn't remember our sins as far as the east is from the west. And that, that, that's, the, that's a tremendous thing. And when that happens, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I like it because it all means it doesn't understand it. Uh, the darkness doesn't grasp it. The, the darkness tries to resist it. The, they just pretty much, they don't, darkness and light do not get along. They can't mix. Amen. I used to tell the kids when I used to teach them, I'm like, have you ever tried to go into a room and watch the darkness flee? You never see it. Because right when you turn on that light, it's gone. Amen. Darkness flees from the light. Yes. And, and the same way evil and sin flees from Christ, from righteousness, from goodness. And that's what Jesus came to provide for us. Yes. And this is what John is trying to say, because, I mean, Greek or Jew, no matter who you were, you're of the mind like, God doesn't just come and... Hang out with us. You know what I mean? What did you say that he came and he was born of a virgin? He's like, no, that's a, that sounds pretty uh, amazing. But not only that, you're saying he, he lived as a carpenter and had brothers and sisters. And, you know what I mean? It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's like, why would he do that? Why would he do that? And, and I'm going to tell you, and because he loves us. Because he loves you that much that he wants to make sure that you know who he is. And that's why I want to encourage us to grab these Bibles. and yeah, they're, they're just the book of John, but if you have this in your pocket, if you need an affirmation of who God is in your life, go to it. Check it out. Make sure you be like, oh, you know what, man? I'm not feeling good today. I'm going to go and see what it says. And what is your, what is your what good one? John 3, 16 or something, right? For God so loved the world, you know, he gave his own to God. So, I mean, anything like that could go and jump in. But, you know, people tend to, instead of reaching for their Bibles or reaching for the Word of God, we, we reach for our phones, for like horoscopes, for psychics, for, I mean, anything that might 
give us a glimmer of hope. But I, hope, I, I want you to know our hope is only in Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, I love this here. You know, it's funny. It's, this, is, this is why we do a lot, because this is, this is the wrong verse. But it's all right. This is a really good verse. But first, let's read the verses 6 and 7 through the book of John. So it's not up here. Don't read this one. This is first John. A man appeared sent from God whose name was John. He came to give testimony to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Amen. So, who are we talking about? We're talking about this guy, John. Not John, the guy who wrote this one, but John the Baptist. And he came to do what? To testify. He came to tell the world of the coming of the Messiah. You know, you know what's funny is John, as great as he was, I mean, Jesus himself said he was the greatest prophet of all time. He's, you know, he's amazing. He says, yet yeah, you, and I'm talking to all y'all, you at home, you here, are going to do more than John. Because you have the Holy Spirit in you and you can speak life into people. You have the opportunity to invite people to know who, who you know, which is Christ Jesus. That, that, that is something that I, that's a lot of responsibility. I don't know about y'all, but I get nervous about things like that. But that's, that's, that's what we are called to be as witnesses. I don't know about, when, 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 when I first came to Christ, I want to tell everybody about my salvation. I want to tell, I always used to think like, man, if Superman saved me yesterday, would I keep that to myself? I don't think I would. I think I'd be, I'd be Instagramming that, you know, I'd be face, Facebooking it, uh, tw tweeting it out, you know, I'll be, I'll be doing all the social media. It's like, y'all never gonna believe what just happened. You know, Superman came, stopped me from getting hit by a car. Oh man, I got his autograph. You know, you know, you, you would not keep that a secret. And yet, we got saved by Christ. And I'm here today to ask you, are you keeping that a secret? That's what I'm saying. We're, we're here to go and tell the world. Because that would be selfish of us if we were to keep that a secret. It would be a shame. It would be a shame if we knew this like great important truth. If we had a Savior and we just kept it to ourselves. But it would still be a shame if we walked around testifying and witnessing and all that saying, I have no sin. I still mess up. I still have shortcomings. I still do things wrong. But I have a Savior who is patient with me, who's helping me get rid of that sin in my life. Amen. The reason why we could talk to other sinners about being saved is because we once were sinners. The reason why we could tell people about the mess they're in because we were once in that mess. Amen. And aren't you just thankful that Jesus Christ didn't look outside of time, up there, just at the planet and say, what a mess. And then leave it. What do you do? He rolled up his sleeves and said, I'm going to go get in there. Amen. And he was born in a mess. I don't know about y'all, but it, it, I, I've done some uh, Christmas <laughs> sermons and stuff, and he was, he was born right where the animals were parked. He was born in a stall. Yeah. Parking lot for, for all the cattle and all, all the people's animals because there was no room for him in the inn. Like, he literally was born into a mess. But, I mean, imagine seeing him from where he's at. I mean, he could probably just look at America and be like, man, that's a mess. But even in the world as a whole, man, I don't know what's going on out there, but they're, they're making a mess of it. But he got, he got to you. He got to me. So what are we doing to help clean up that mess? I still think the first part of cleaning up a mess is to turn on the lights. Amen. So you can see that mess. <laughs> so, you see that, so you can see that mess. You ever try to clean a mess in the dark? I have. <laughs> With a little flashlight or something because you know, I don't want to change the light bulb. That's my wife. I'm horrible at changing light bulbs. And I'm like, I'll just use this little lamp. You know, who knows why I just can't just get up there and screw it in. But, you know, the less light, it's harder to clean the mess, right? So we, we, we want to turn the lights on in this world. 
And the way we turn on the light is we turn on the light in our own home first. We don't go and flash the light into someone else's house. As much as we want it, we like, I see still. Uh-huh. I knew all that thing was nothing, you know what I mean? I just, like, catch you, catch you best enough, didn't that? That'd be a horrible precedent to set. What we should do first is turn on our lights and clean up our own house first. Clean our own acts up, right? And uh, John 1 9 it says, The true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Jesus, the Word, came into the very world He created, but the world didn't recognize Him. He came to His own people, and even they rejected Him. It's saying, why do we turn that on and we get excited about it? Because we decided not to reject Him, but it says, most are going to reject Him. God didn't reject Him. They rejected Him. And when we want to show them a better way that God, God will accept us. He won't reject you. He's not Mutumbo. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know if you guys know, know Mutumbo. He's not going to reject you. He's going to accept you. Just as you are. Like I've heard so many times people were like, man, first let me get this fixed and let me get this situated and then let me uh, do X, Y, Z and then maybe I'll show up. I'm like, how about you show up and then God will help you X, Y, Z and then he'll help you fix this and do that. First step is let's, 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 light, let's let that light into our lives. Because in the, be, you know, in the beginning, God was the one that created it all. And yet, after he saw where his creation was going, he stepped back into creation to be a part of it. To be a part of our lives. To have an everlasting relationship with you. I mean, that is, it's almost uncomfortable. Like, <laughs> what, what did I do to deserve that? And the answer is, I did nothing. God is just that loving. He has that much grace and that much mercy. You know, it is, he has, and, that, and that's the truth. And I love that because he doesn't mix anything up. He doesn't say, oh, well, uh, let me give you grace without truth. Because that would just, that wouldn't help nobody. Or let me give you truth without grace, because that wouldn't help nobody. He came to give it all to us. So God's question to us is, will you be my child? Like I said, thankfully, I'm hoping that you guys are here, you already, you already answered that question. But there's, if not millions, billions of people out there that have it. Maybe they don't even know that God is asking them that question. And I, I want to challenge not only you, but myself to go out and let them know that there's a God asking that question to them. Let them know, hey, there's, there's a God that wants you to be a part of His family. In, in verses 12 through 13, it says, To all who did receive Him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. We have an opportunity to let people know, hey, there's, there's a God that wants to adopt you. Maybe, maybe a lot of us will understand that because oh, I wasn't adopted. How does that affect me? You know, like, we're born, that's why he says, oh, well, you're born into your, your earthly parents, right? You, you already were there. You know how much they love you. The thing about adoption, and I didn't know this, like, I, I met my wife, but she was adopted. But, like, the thing about people that adopt somebody is they chose them. Like, they didn't have to. They, they, they made it over effort to get them, to go get them, to take them out of the place they once were. And bring them to themselves. Not saying I'm not discounting any parents. You know, parents they have to do a lot to, you know, have their kids and stuff. But it's just, it's just crazy to think that somebody will go out of their way to take you and bring you a part of their lives. Because one thing we know is life's tough. Life is as hard as it is, and then you're on top of that, you're going to bring somebody else into that life and take care of that person. 
But you hear God is saying, I'll do that. I'll take care of you. Heck, I've actually been wanting to take care of you since the beginning. You just, you just got to let me. And if you let me, you'll be part of my family. Part of my family forever. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. So how did he do that? He came into this world. He became human to be in our lives. To know what we went through. And like it says in scripture, Jesus wept. Jesus got hungry. Jesus was tired. Jesus, Jesus knows all the things that you have gone through because he experienced them. And people are like, oh, uh, you know, what, is, what does God know about me? And I'm trying to, I'm just what I'm trying to argue with you today is God knows everything about you and he's not only showing you sympathy, but he shows empathy because he got in the hole with us. Amen. Amen. He, he, came, he came into the world with us so that way he, he wasn't just standing somewhere and just saying, man, I wonder how that feels, but I sure do feel bad for him. He came into this world to see what we had to go through. And what did he do? He overcame this world. Amen. He beat the world. He beat the system. Because the system was, you sin, you, you die. That's how we know we're all sinners. Guess what? We all die. We, we probably have enough experience in life to know that people, once they're born, they're on the path to one day die. But if you die in Christ, guess what? You'll live forever. Amen. Amen. you live forever with Him. Amen. And so he mentions John again. Your poor witness of Him in Christ saying, This was He of whom I spoke, that He comes after me and is preferred before me. Here comes another one. He's just saying, Man, shouldn't we be just telling everyone about this? Like, like if John was doing it, and John was doing this like before Jesus was even on the scene. We were ready to know Jesus came and he, he conquered. You know, he, he's at the right hand of God right now, intercessing on our behalf. Like we know the truth. And here we got this crazy guy, John. He was shouting at the top of his lungs from the roof or from the wilderness. Maybe we should go and shout it from the top of our lungs from the rooftops. Because I know they're, they're, they're putting in new restrictions. So we may not be able to go everywhere. So go on top of your roof and yell at everybody. <laughs> Mask it, I don't know. Don't do that. I mean, maybe. If you do it, send me a video. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, just, just go let everybody know. Jesus loves you. You know what I mean? I think those are the kind of signs I wouldn't mind seeing around this state, this city. I haven't seen signs galore about everything else. Man, the, my favorite ones are the ones that just say, God loves you. Because he does. Um, here in John 1 16 for out of his fullness the superabundance of his grace and truth we have all received grace upon grace spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing favor upon favor and gift heaped upon gift we have a superabundance of grace and truth in our lives if you are in Christ today, you know how fortunate we are and how blessed we are. He has lavished us with mercy. And it says his mercies are born afresh every morning. You know why? Because we need his mercy every morning. He always gives us what, I, what we need. Don't, don't get hung up on what we want. That, that's the problem. We always want. I know me. I want all kinds of things. You know, I want, I want, I want. Pretty sure they get Warren G song, something like that. But it's just, you know, just, we, we grew up wanting. Like my son, love and death, he's eight months. But you know what? He wants. He wants a lot of things, but what does mom or dad sometimes, but mostly what does mom say? You want that son, but you don't need it. You know, and, and, and that's, that's not part of truth. But that part of grace that we show our kids and that God shows us is, and we sometimes we mess up, we don't go with the truth, he shows us grace. Yes. After, after 
we did what we were told not to do, he still picks us up and holds us and says, it's okay, it's going to be okay, son. It's going to be okay, daughter. Amen. I still love you, and I always will. I'm getting ready to close. It says, For the law was given to Moses, but grace and truth came through Christ Jesus. Amen. That the law revealed our sin. Jesus Christ took care of our sin. So some people be like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to read all those rules. And, you know, I've ever read Deuteronomy or, you know, I've ever read Leviticus. Those are harsh. <laughs> oh, well, thank goodness that I don't live by the, you know, like under the law. But the law still is important because it points out the reason why I need grace and and truth. There's a reason why I need this stuff. I need forgiveness because the law did show me that I was going and I was fighting against God. But even when we're still His enemies, God loved us. No one has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, Jesus, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has revealed him. So why did so what, what what was John's whole eighteen verses that he was trying to tell us? He was trying to say is in Jesus as the Word God makes Himself audible. In Jesus as the light God makes Himself visible. In Jesus as the life God makes Himself tangible. And in Jesus as the Son God makes Himself knowable. I love that makes. Jesus makes God audible, visible, tangible, knowable. Those are things that we need to hear because those are the questions that people are going to ask us. Well, how do you know there's a God? Have, have you ever seen God? How do I know He's in my life? How can I know Him personally? And, and we, we as Christians, we're able to wholeheartedly say, look to Jesus. And he takes care of all those things for you. I can have you all stand. I, I even ended it a little bit early today. That's okay. More time for prayer. But, but, but here in uh, John 7, 38, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Today, when you guys walk out of here, let that river flow in your hearts and let it reach out and fill the cups of all those around you. If you guys could bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord, it says we have not because we ask not. It says if we seek, we shall find. Lord, we are fortunate to have you in our lives right now. We just pray by going through this gospel, by, by coming and worshiping you, Lord, by letting the river flow out of our hearts for all those around us, that we may be a light unto this world and that we can shine to give you glory, Lord. Lord, we know that there's a huge amount of people that we know that we love that have not made that decision to get to know you, that have been putting it off or have been just straight out rejecting it. Lord, let our lives illustrate your love to those individuals. Let us be a light post that they can go towards to come closer to you, Lord. And let us always remember that we love you because you first loved us. Lord, if you're tugging on the hearts of anyone watching at home or here who has been just thinking and contemplating on making that all-important decision of believing in you and surrendering their lives, repenting of their sins and turning it over to you, Lord. Lord, I pray that today they make that decision. For today is the day of salvation. And for all of those who are ready, your servants, who already know you, Lord. I pray that their relationship just continues to grow. 
and that they just remember that first love. And we just get excited. Let us be united and not divided, Lord. In you, Jesus Christ. We pray all these things. Amen. Thank you all. You guys, hey, just take care of yourself. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Man, I must have not did a very good job. Look at him.